Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear friends, this is the third video in the continuation of wind load calculation example problems. In this video, we will calculate wind pressures for this structure using ASCE 716 specifications. As we can see that this structure is having gable roof. These are the dimensions of the structure and these are cardinal axes for our reference. Before getting started, if you are new to our channel, then please hit like and subscribe button and share as well with your friends. And let's learn structural engineering together. One more thing, we have already started design courses related to reinforced concrete structures and steel structures along with the steel connection design. If you did not watch those videos, then please go and watch those. Links of these videos I am sharing in the description below. So let's get started. The design data for example problem 3 is shown where wind velocity is 160 mph, building exposure is C and it's considered as the rigid structure so its gust effect factor is taken as 0.85. Building category is 2 and building is located on homogeneous topography. So these are the dimensions and this is the elevation in which all the levels are mentioned along with the mean roof height. So step 1 is to calculate the velocity pressure using this particular equation. So we require these factors. So these factors are as shown. We have already talked about in the previous videos how to get these coefficients from different tables. So this is the kz factor against each z value and after plug in all the values in above equation we get qz as shown. The velocity pressure at z is equals to h is uh and is shown in the red highlighted color. Step 2 is to find out the internal pressure coefficient as we are not having any particular opening since it's an ideal condition for the time being. So using this particular table we are getting GCPI value as plus minus 0.18 considered as enclosed building. Step 3 is to find out the external pressure coefficient. So note that length is parallel to wind direction considered. For walls length over breadth ratios for both the direction of winds are mentioned. Using this particular table we are getting these values. So in this the last value will be found out by using interpolation technique against L over B 2.125. So now for the roof CB values can be calculated using the table in which we are requiring H over L ratio and the roof angle which is 26.56. So we can see that in the above part of the table there are two sections windward and leeward. So since we are having the both the cases for this particular problem so we will have to incorporate both the cases. So for windward part CP values having two cases. So for case 1 interpolation for CP1 against required H over L these values and when in that interpolation for CP1 against required theta we are getting this particular value. Similarly for case 2 these are the values and for leeward wall since the theta is greater than 20 so CP value is minus 0.6. Here we can see that in the leeward section if theta is greater than 20 then no need to interpolation because all the values are same. Now for north to south or south to north direction h over l is 0.294 and now since we are calculating the CP value for, for wind parallel to ridge so we are having these four region wise CP values like in the previous examples. So 
Step 4 is to find out the design wind pressure using this particular equation. Since we have to calculate wind pressures for these levels, so for windward ball, these are the parameters and the factors that we have previously calculated. And this is the chart. Here, external P means the external pressure, internal P means the internal pressure, and the red highlighted values are actually the net pressures. P positive means pressure when positive GCPI is considered and P negative means pressure when the negative GCPI is considered. Similarly for the side walls where CP is minus 0.7 so the external and internal pressures are shown separately and then the net pressures. And for the leeward wall when wind west to east or east to west and north to south or south to north. Now for wind west to east or east to west, for the windward roofs, the pressures are like this. Okay, there are the two cases for windward and one case for leeward. For roof north to south or south to north, these are the pressures for case 1 and these are the pressures for case 2. Now wind pressure load cases for combining all the surfaces pressures. So now let's take a graphical representation of these pressures. The, the load case 1 when wind is blowing from west to east direction for case 1 with the positive GCPI. These are the plan of the building and this is the windward wall pressure which and which varies with z and this is the leeward wall pressure and these are the side wall pressures when we cut a section aa then where windward wall pressure look like this leeward wall pressures and this is the windward roof pressure and this is the leeward roof pressures here visualization is very much important observe the wind direction wind is blowing from west to east and since the roof has two parts leftward and the rightward wind is blowing from west to east so the left part is become windward part and the right part is become the leeward part for this particular wind direction so the corresponding pressures are shown and when we see the isometric view so this one is the windward roof pressure and it is away from the surface and this one is the leeward roof pressure and it is also away from the surface why because both the pressure magnitudes are having the negative sign with them in the isometric view we have only show the roof pressures for load case 2 similarly all the values are with the negative GCPI For load case 3, when wind is blowing in the same direction but with case 2 and case 2 is differ with respect to the CP value, different CP value. So now the windward roof pressure is little, little lower than the previous one but still is having with the negative sign. So, away from the surfaces. Similarly, for load case 4, now we can see that the windward roof pressure is having the positive magnitude of pressure. So, when we see the isometric view, we can see that this time this pressure is towards the surface rather than away from the surface but the leeward wall is having the negative magnitude of pressure so it is away from the surface similarly for the load case 5 when wind is blowing from west to east then this will become the windward wall this is the leeward wall and these are the side wall remain same when we cut a section aa then this is the windward wall pressure this is the leeward wall pressure 
Now the right portion of the roof has become the windward roof and the left portion of the roof has become the leeward roof and both are having the negative pressures with them. So in the isometric view we can see that both the pressures are away from the surfaces. Similarly for the load case 6 with the negative GCPI. Load case 7, case 2 positive GCPI. Load case 8, case 2 with the negative GCPI. Now load case 9 with, when wind is blowing from south to north for case 1 with the positive GCPI. It is the plan of the building. It is the windward wall pressure and this one is the leeward wall pressure and these are become the side walls now. And when we cut the section AA then here we can see that now these two are having the side wall pressures and the roof pressures are like this. This is the region wise pressures and when we see the isometric view we can see that this one is the windward wall and from 0 to H region the pressure is this and from H to 2H the pressure is this and from greater than 2H the pressure is this. Since the pressure is decreasing as the distance from the windward wall is getting larger. These all pressures are away from the surface because all are having the negative magnitude. Load case 10. Load case 11. Now this time the roof are having the uniform pressure. Why? Because case 2 are having the uniform CP value. It is not dependent upon the regions. Similarly load case 12 with the negative GCPI. And here the roof pressure is towards the surface because it is having the positive magnitude. Similarly load case 13 when wind is blowing from north to south so this time this wall become the windward wall this one is the leeward and these are the side walls section AA same pressures but from the opposite direction as we can see that in the isometric view this one is now the leeward wall and this one is from the 0 to H region the pressure for H to 2H and the pressure for greater than 2H and these are all away from the surface. Load case 14 Load case 15 Uniform pressure and load case 16 So this ends of our example problem 3. I have taken the simple structure in this example so that I can explain the things more clearly. Later on we will add a video to our analysis and design playlist to show how to design and assign these loads in analysis softwares. Further in the next videos of this playlist we will see different structures for calculating wind load pressures. I hope that through this example you people get better understanding of calculating wind loads using ASCE 7 specifications. If you liked our video then please hit like and subscribe button and share as well with your friends. And you can comment below for your desired content or video. I will try to make that content for you. So this is up for today. See you in the next video.